Rob, we've just spent the last hour uh, beating the air into submission in the latest generation of the DA42, the NG. After a number of iterations and issues and so forth with the dreaded T-word, you folks not only found a solution, but you designed a whole new engine as part of your solution, which I can't remember the last time a manufacturer did that, so good on you. Excellent. It's a truly outstanding engine. It uh, has a lot of promise for the market. Uh, We're very happy to have this aircraft now introduced to the market, especially after the economic recession we've just had. It is really a great performer. Well, it's kind of funny flying along on the downwind, uh, you know, just uh, cranking along at about 65% there. It's just very turbine smooth. And for a moment there with, uh, you know, the low slung engines off that side, it kind of felt very much like a Cheyenne. It was turbine smooth there. Don't you feel the the flight controls, the harmonization, the, the pressure inputs are just outstanding. A lot of a lot of good work from the engineers has gone into the development of the DA-42, well, the whole family, but especially with the uh, new Ostro NG. Well, let's talk a little bit about flying the airplane. We uh, departed uh, 3-1 with a better part of 15 to 20 knots of uh, direct cross. Not a whole lot of problems maintaining directional control, a little bit of... Uh, uh, you know, into the wind aileron, a little bit of rudder to keep it up. Uh, at the same time, awfully good uh, power response from both Ostros. We stood on the brakes, powered it up, brake release, and we were off like a rifle shot. It uh, did fairly well, and even though I kept it down, we were off the ground and running well under a 1,000. Oh, you did an amazing job. There's an excellent, excellent crosswind and good uh, demonstration of the aircraft's potential, especially for the vertical climb out. Full power from the takeoff. We had excellent control response. Once it came back to maximum continuous power, still had well over a thousand feet, uh, about 1,300 feet per minute uh, climb rate out there. With the conditions we had today, it was uh, it was a good performer. Well, what's kind of nice about this, though, too, is that uh, the airplane has a very solid feel on it. There was no problem at all. I mean, keep in mind that you've got an awfully long wing, so you have a certain amount of rolling inertia to deal with. Stomp on the rudder. It's, it's glider heritage is you know, still sacrosanct in the entire diamond line. You lead with the rudder a little bit, and uh, it, it rolls very nicely into it uh, with that little bit of persuasion. I found out that the 100% uh, definitely got us plenty of thrust to get off the runway very quickly. We brought it back to 92%, which is your maximum sustained. Had no problem maintaining a 10, 12, 1300 foot a minute rate of climb. And keep in mind that I'm keeping it fairly conservative in my climb numbers because I'm more looking for don't hit that guy, don't hit that guy, and don't hit that guy rather than climb out king. But you didn't find any any point there at all during any of the flight there that you had a lack of power. It was always far more than what you needed for the average sort of short cross country and the pattern work we did here today. If you own a Cirrus today or if you are considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidine, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidine Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, providing the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. Well, a couple of things that were, of course, noteworthy. Uh, the DA-42 has always been known for outstanding low-speed handling, uh, both in the original Teeler airplane and then the, the uh, L-360 that you and I flew at Oshkosh and beat to distraction. The airplane has just a very nice uh, low-amplitude, high-frequency buffet prior to you know any onset of uh, actual physical stall and totally cleaned up, power full back. It's a non-event. With a notch of flaps and a little bit of gear, there's a little bit of a pitch buck. It's kind of looking for its place. At the same time, this is, you know, keep in mind, they all cleaned up. We were 80-ish at the time, and yes. we were starting to really feel the break, uh, such as it was. It wasn't much of a break at all, per se. We were in this, the uh, 65 to 70 area at the time at which we were getting the pitch buck, gear down, flaps down, in an approach configuration. Awfully good lateral handling, awfully good roll response, good yaw into it, no problem at all. I mean, you have to hold a, uh, a lot of pitch in there to at least get it to the point of uh, uh, getting it anywhere near a physical stall. But at the same time, uh, the control remained pretty consistent throughout the entire range. Yes, the outstanding safety features of the aircraft are the low-speed handling qualities. They're just uh, truly amazing. All the Diamond products have amazing low-speed handling, and that translates into safe handling from students up to the uh, fairly experienced pilots. As you saw with the power-on and power-off stalls today in different configurations, it really was a true performer. Very, very docile, very safe handling qualities. 
Now we're running about mid 70s ambient temperatures here on the ground uh, at about uh, 2,500 feet down low, you know, slogging along where we barely got out of the uh, scud, uh, kind of a turbulent day uh, down low here. But 75% and 13 gallons an hour with both uh, pulling. We saw 148, 149, about 150 knots without too much trouble. During a higher, say, a higher altitude cruise around 9, 10, 11,000 feet, you're going to be something up around 170, 175, and I have seen over 180 knots uh, in some ISA conditions during the cruise there, but it's not hard to see. Speeds in the 170s to 180s region with the Austro NG. And burning a lot less fuel than I'm used to. A lot less fuel. And cheaper fuel mostly. Oh, it can go for a long range. It's looking at about 1,200 nautical miles maximum. You're talking over seven hours of in the aircraft, which is quite a long time to be sitting in an airplane. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. Coming back, we're using uh, Runway 31 with uh, 15 to 20 knots right off the, uh, the east side, and it's booking. I mean, as a matter of fact, I'm 45 degrees to the runway on the uh, final approach, just crabbing into it and, and basically barely holding position. It was interesting that, you know, once you got into the flare, just got the wing down into the flare and just let it fly through. Uh, the nice wide gear under the circumstances tracked very well once you planted the, uh, the upwind main. And then on top of that, uh, above and beyond that, you just had such great yaw authority to keep things steered straight and narrow. It was a Hell was a hell of a good landing, and I love to take credit for it, but it was, you know, kind of airplane-induced. Well, you think about, you've never flown the Austro-NG. You've never flown the aircraft with this control. And on your first hour, no, sure, you have a lot of flying experience, but how easy it was to fly this aircraft with a 19-knot crosswind in the flare point. 19 knots. The aircraft has a max dem demonstrated crosswind component of 25 knots, but you did 19 knots and did not have a problem coming in there at the end because you had complete controllability of the aircraft. The airplane sets you up pretty well. It's all a matter of flying the attitudes and once you had the proper landing attitude and a de reasonably decent flare, close the power and just set it down that just get that, you know, the upwind wing down into it just the slightest little bit. I don't think we, what, held five or ten degrees into it and just let it just settle in and from there it tracked like it was on rails. It does have good landing gear. It's very wide. It's very stable. There is good uh, control harmonization that for any sort of high crosswind uh, regimes uh, you're gonna you're gonna be doing very good with this aircraft a very very fine handling aircraft in all sort of uh, crosswinds or wind conditions. 